Welcome everyone to the video no one asked for. Uh, today we are going to do a video uh, entitled Physical Review Memes. Um, so we're just going to have some fun, look at some memes, talk about them, uh, see what we see. It's of course physics themed. It's a video type that uh, has been done by everybody else except for me. Definitely not an original idea. Uh, I don't know if we need more videos like this on the internet, but I'm about to post one. Um, so let's jump right into some memes. <laughs> so first up is uh, is uh, reading reviewer B's uh, uh, comments. So this is sort of um, a meme. Once you get to the point where you're uh, publishing quite a bit, I've made a I've made a joke video about this before. This is a uh, I assume it looks like maybe some type of esport, probably Counter Strike. Um, uh, this coach is shocked or something like this. Um, oftentimes, what you can get is you get to reviewer A who loves your research, and for some reason, reviewer B has almost seemed to take like offense to your research or thinks it's like not even worth their time. I don't know. It's like a good cop, bad cop situation. Um, and <laughs> I don't know. Uh, memes about this always resonate uh, quite well. Uh, it's, a, it's an unfortunate uh, sort of thing that you get when you uh, write papers in today's world. This next one will probably resonate with you if you write code a lot in your research or you're in computer science or you know you've you've written any type of uh uh pro like you you've done any type of project that is uh code based so right now he says so you know I, I guess i can read it uh, just keep coding uh we can always fix it later you know right now my big project my big thing that i can contribute to research is built off of you know this really big code and it doesn't have to be that big because i've done a really bad job of upkeeping the code and I just add more code uh, every time I need to. So now my, it's called exact diagonalization. My exact diag diagonalization code takes like, you know, it's not that long, but it's like two minutes to compile it. And uh, yeah, I, I guess this is sort of like a soft way to announce it, but in about, I would say two to three weeks, uh, there's gonna be an announcement on the channel and on our Discord channel. Um, and sort of more publicly that uh, there's going to be um, initially a closed beta. A way to fix this is, uh, this problem that I'm having in my research was just to write a library um, that is quick, efficient. You know, the backbone of my, of my code is really fast. And uh, with some modifications, it's become much sort of easier to use. So you can uh, eventually you'll be able to download it and do uh, exact calculations yourself in quantum many body systems. And I'll put tutorials on the channel eventually. But yeah, this is uh, I mean, this wall here is basically um, the state of my current research code uh, that's hopefully going to be replaced. Uh, by code that you'll you'll all have access to uh, shortly as well. So the nucleus of a hydrogen atom with its one orbiting electron. Uh, it's always a uh, it's always a good one. The reviewer B comment. The reviewer said, uh, "This is from Twitter. Uh, I think I lifted this from Twitter a while ago and then posted it to the Discord channel." Um, the reviewer said my findings are meaningless and my research question doesn't interest them, uh, then questioned my integrity as a researcher, so now I write, thank you for your helpful comments. It's, it's a really strange, it is a really strange uh, sort of dynamic that you have, because these people are very much in control of, uh, you know, whether or not you're going to, uh, whether or not you're going to publish and, uh, you know, you're, you know, the editors are trusting them as experts to give good opinions. Um, and sometimes, you know, sometimes the reviewer B, uh, dis through all of the perceived negativity, does have really good, uh, really good points. But I feel like, I don't know, I don't know. It's it's always shocking reading reviewer B's comments sometimes. Not not that it's, I mean, of course it's not every single time, but you know, you usually expect potentially to get a reviewer B type comment. All right, so the next one, I've had to awkwardly sort of open it, uh, but we seem to have two uh, cavemen arguing. Big Rock is the most fundamental particle uh, in the universe. Um, and the next one says, no, Big Rock is made up of small rocks. And they say two collider. And they roll these, these rocks down the collider. Look, small rock come out of big rock, small rock, fundamental. Small rock is maybe statistical artifact. <laughs> uh, okay, small rock, fundamental. Me told you so. 
Wait, small rock made up of very small rocks. Very small rock is for fundamental. <laughs> it's a new person on the scene, new physicist. Um, no such thing as very small rock. Two collider. Ha, very small rocks uh, must split. Is that must? Rocks not split. Small rock is fundamental. Just need rocks go faster, then find very small rock. Sure. <laughs> Ten 10,000 iterations later. Professor, what's a fundamental particle? Anything smaller than what was fundamental a generation ago. I guess, you know, I'm not a particle physicist. I see criticisms of the particle physics community um, on the internet like this. And of course, you know, James and I have commented on this, uh, like on the, on the streams, where I guess, you know, do we think there's going to be a smallest rock? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. You, 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 you can meet certain particle physicists um, and other physicists who do think that there is something, you know, there, there is an end to the journey of smashing rocks that are smaller and smaller and smaller, right? So I guess it's an open question, an interesting open question that can get people, um, you know, quite worked up. <laughs> but this is, a, this is a quality meme. So next up we have, um, we have dad, I'm not feeling sleepy yet. Could you tell me a bedtime paradox? And then his dad says, uh, or their dad says, every number is closer to zero than to infinity. Still, we approximate large numbers as infinity. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess it is kind of interesting, you know, in, in, some, of, in some of my videos and in some of my work, what we do is we take the limit as time goes to infinity um, quite a bit. And then if someone raises their hand and says, you know, why, why can we do that? Why is that interesting? You usually say, I mean, you're, you're interested in time scales that are like E to the power of the thermodynamic, uh, entropy. Um, and that's a, that's an incredibly long, uh, time, of course, uh, that scales with the volume of the system or the number of, uh, particles in your system. And, uh, but you know, it's not infinity. <laughs> I guess it is closer to zero, uh, than it is to infinity. But I mean, I mean, like, come on, come on. These, uh, these, uh, these, these limiting processes are, I guess, I mean, you can make more rigorous statements, I guess. We don't need to be, we don't need to laugh at my analytics that much. So here is, uh, uh Messi sleeping with the, uh, the big, uh, you know, uh, what is it? Nel Nelson and Schwang book on quantum computation and quantum information. Yeah, it was my first introduction to, to quantum information. Certainly felt like, uh, you know, something uh, to be very attached to uh, when I first got it. It's sort of a state, it's sort of a staple of the community, I guess. I don't, I don't know if there's updated or newer resources that are more common now, but at least when I started, this was, uh, this was the go-to book. Here's another one. Grad school is the worst, Chris. I mean, I know the memes are great, but God, at what cost? <laughs> You know, I, I feel like I feel like I got really lucky when I went to grad school because I went to grad school uh, before the pandemic. And because I did that, um, the cost of living crisis hadn't really kicked in yet. You know, rent wasn't rent was still pretty big because I was close to Toronto. Um, and uh, but food was like, you know, affordable if you went to, uh, you know, not the expensive uh, grocery store chain. But now, I mean, you know, Science Discuss did a did a video on this where like even statistics leading up to uh, 2019, I mean, like grad school is so much work for so little money for so long. You know, I was in grad school for five years. Some people are in grad school for six years, I guess with great suffering comes good memes unfortunately uh you know i in in canada it's kind of strange that if you're in a field that makes a lot more money or has a lot more like direct funding sources from industry you can get trapped in grad school for even longer so on paper at my old university it was a two-year master's and then a four-year phd and unfortunately what that ended up turning out for a lot of people was um supervisors that had enough money to do so would sometimes refuse to let them graduate regardless of the quality of their work. Um, so super, yeah, I don't know. I guess this meme, <laughs> all that suffering, uh, you know, all these funny things that come out of uh, grad school, unfortunately, it's like, I don't know, there is some darkness uh, to all of that. There's lots of, you know, it's your, it's your 20s, I guess, right? Um, you know, your young energetic years while you're also like an adult. 
that's lost to this really big grind that, uh, yeah, at what cost? <laughs> this one, this one made me laugh when I saw it. Uh, nature, uh, the growing inaccessibility of science. So, uh, and it's behind a paywall. It's not only inaccessible because there are paywalls behind every journal, and the paywalls seem to get worse depending on how prestigious uh, uh, the journal is. You also have journals that charge you publication fees, um, and a lot of researchers don't have funds for this, so they can't even you know try to publish in the prestigious journals. And on top of that, I mean, grad school wages are really really bad right so you already need to come from like a relatively stable financial background to even um want to take the risk to go to grad school because it is a risk in the end um and it, and of course it's just getting it's getting worse everywhere it seems um you know undergrad in a lot of places you know there's a lot of places where it's free but there's a lot of places where it's not free right so i took out student loans um and in Canada, I guess it's kind of nice. You don't pay interest on your loans until you get out of uh, you get out of school. Uh, but now I'm like in a postdoc, not making a lot of money, and now I have student loans to pay. So, you know, it's, it's the it's growing more inaccessible to consume science. Um, I think we need more science communicators, and I think we need more open source. Um, uh, uh, movements in the publications of science and, and so on but it's also getting inaccessible to like actually do science unfortunately like there there are certain places where even if you get tenure track the salaries aren't enough to actually live anywhere close to the university you have tenure track at right um so yeah there's some there's some hurdles for the system to try and get through unfortunately fifth grade math student doing this i wouldn't even attempt this in this day and age uh for my current uh, arithmetic skills it's big multiplication and the math phd student uh what is five plus seven this is me as well i mean i technically do math i'm just a theoretical physicist so the math i do isn't as um impressive but you know i might be caught uh, checking a calculator for what like 13 plus five well i guess that's kind of easy but you know those those five plus sevens you know they're a little tricky it always gets me when people ask me um in canada to calculate the tip it's like you're supposed to pay like 15 percent or something like this and they're like do it as a party trick or something like this and it's like i don't i don't know <laughs> i don't know i mess up adding fractions sometimes so doing mental math for a tip isn't exactly something that's uh you know in the cards so here's another one. Uh, this is basically a summary of my research. This is something I posted. Uh, thermodynamic limit. You got a, you got someone running away, someone chasing behind them. My numerical results, and a, a news reporter. To, I think this is an anime. I don't know what anime it is. I just thought the uh, the structure of the the meme was funny. Um, as you can see, the gap is closing. And because I do numerics a lot, I mean, I do do some analytics. Like, unfortunately, this is very much what a lot of my uh, my research sort of boils down to. I'm making plots, and those plots have, uh, you know, system size there on the x-axis, and the quantities are approaching uh, something. And I'm saying, look, listen, the gap is closing. The prediction is right. You know, uh, we know what's going to happen when the system size gets sufficiently big. Um, so this is just a, a graphical representation of doing uh, research as a numerical physicist. <laughs> scientist then versus scientist now. Studying philosophy provides independence from generational prejudices, which is necessary for creative thought and philosophical insights. Allows you to see the forest rather rather than just the trees. Philo scientist now. Philosophy distracts with too much question asking. I wonder if people actually feel this way. Like, I feel like, uh, feel like at least recently discussing quantum foundations is sort of a nice topic. Certainly the public likes it. They, lo they love hearing about many worlds and uh, like all the, all of these things. Um, I don't know. Let me know. Like, do you, do you think philosophy, do, like pe people have as much of a, a negative view of philosophy um, as some people perceive them uh, to? So my friends talk about quantum physics, me, uh, sleep is just a time machine to breakfast, my dudes. Listen, sometimes you got to turn your brain off. You can't talk about uh, quantum mechanics all day, every day. You can't go to work and do quantum mechanics all day, every day, and then want to have a casual chat 
uh, you know, every night kind of thing. I found, I've found that, uh, at least in the UK so far, most people don't want to talk about work, even if it's research, uh, like when we go out after hours, like people just don't talk about physics outside of the university. Maybe it's just me. I'm not one to start these conversations. I didn't really like doing it um, in Canada, but I found that the Canadian physicists or the people working in Canada, you go out to the bar and it just seems like that's all they want to talk about. I don't know if that's uh, the same as your experience, but uh, I'd be interested to know. Yeah, you, you definitely got to turn your brain off sometimes. You can't just be, you know, you can't just be chugging quantum mechanics all day, every day, unfortunately. Okay, so that's it for uh, this sort of a, a experimental video. All of those memes were posted uh, to my Discord channel. There's a there's a slot there called Physical uh, Review Memes. And um, yeah, if, if you're, I don't know, like it's fun to post memes, it's fun to talk about them. So if you're interested in that or you're interested in joining the Discord at all, the link's always in the uh, description. So come uh, post your memes. Uh, it'd be fun to grow the community a little bit and get that uh, be a more regular community to get uh, memes posted in. Um, but yeah, I hope you liked th this uh, this video. It's more of a fun video. Usually my videos are sort of serious from a philosophical perspective or from a math perspective or a topic perspective. But it's always nice to relax a little bit and remember that you know at the end of the day we're just we're just cave people you know smashing rocks together trying to figure out. Uh, trying to figure out what's going on, trying to explain our universe with, um, you know, admittedly uh, a lot of uh, hilarious and unfortunate downsides to uh, the organizations or the institutions that we've constructed uh, to do so.